lads lasses and the rest of the masses welcome back to the channel i'm mono from mono cfc and these are five alternatives to chelsea transfer targets number one joao paulinha chelsea have been linked with numerous defensive midfield options lately and are looking likely to sign the ever impressive moises casado from brighton but what if that move was to fall through I think a fantastic backup option would be the Portuguese destroyer from Fulham, Joao Paulinha. Hard in the tackle and able to break up play and dictate games with his incredible defensive mind, Paulinha would be an excellent partner for Enzo Fernandes in the middle. If you take a look at his stats, you can see where his strengths lie. In comparison to every midfielder in the top 5 leagues, he massively overperforms in most defensive disciplines, being in the top 1% of tacklers, or the 99th percentile. At 6 foot 2, he's also very good in the air, winning enough aerial duels to put him into the 92nd percentile. Chelsea lack a level of aerial dominance, specifically in the midfield area, and he would help compensate for this. Lastly, he excels in clearing the ball too, being in the 88th percentile for clearances. Along with that, he's pretty decent at blocks and interceptions too. His passing stats don't look great, but these are slightly misleading. Because of his playstyle, he's rarely on the ball and thus doesn't pass it much, because that's not his job in this Fulham team. And as a result of that, his pass completion stats suffers because of a smaller sample size. Not to mention, these stats are in comparison to all midfielders, not just defensive midfielders, so it's pretty obvious that he'd have lesser stats than players that are further forward than him. Likewise, he isn't the type of player to dribble on the ball and take players on, he's a sitter, so those stats are going to look worse. Like I spoke about with Ugarte a few videos ago, he has most of the opposites to Enzo, and they would likely cover for each other's weaknesses. Joao would do the running and win the ball back, and Enzo would be the creative progressor in the midfield. Number 2. Emiliano Martinez the goalkeeping spot is another position that Chelsea need to fill, with some of the targets we've been linked with such as Mike Mangyang and Andre Onana looking ever unlikely. There is still other targets out there to be had however, with one player standing out to me as an excellent choice. I'd suggest Aston Villa's World Cup winner Emiliano Martinez. A decent shot stopper and a great character to have in the dressing room, Martinez would bring some much needed stability in between the sticks. Let's compare him to other goalkeepers in the top 5 leagues, and you can see here that his shot stopping stats seem rather average, however it's important to note that these stats are from the last 365 days and includes the period before Unai Emery took over and Aston Villa's defence as a whole under woeful manager Steven Gerrard was leaky and offered zero help for their keeper. Martinez has conceded 36 goals in 35 games and kept 11 clean sheets in the Premier League this season. But listen to these stats from before Unai Emery's term. He conceded 16 goals in 13 games before Unai took over, that's 1.23 goals per game. To put that into perspective, they then conceded only 20 goals in 22 games after this under Emery, meaning he conceded only 4 more goals with 9 more games, or 0.9 goals per game. This would have put him in the 90 to 91st percentile, but when you put the two together it averages out at one goal per game, which makes the stat look worse than it is. Though it's worth noting that despite this, one goal per game is better than some keepers such as Domonarumma, better than Allison, and around the same as Thibaut Courtois, so take this stat with a pinch of salt. Looking at his other stats that don't rely as much on his teammates, you can see that he excels in stopping crosses, something Chelsea have struggled with, being in the 99th percentile for that stat. He's also very good at defending far out from his goal too. His passing stats suggest that he is comfortable with the ball at his feet and likes to play it out from the back, which will suit Chelsea perfectly as we are largely a possession-based side and that will continue under Pochettino. He'll be comfortable living in London, as he did so for almost a decade when playing for Arsenal, and it's good that he finally stepped away from that club and was allowed to show his qualities. If you're enjoying the content and haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Around 95% of the people that watch my videos aren't subscribed. We're so close to 3k subs, and you could be the one to get us there. It's free and it helps support me and make these types of videos, and I'd appreciate it so much. Much love team, let's get back to the video. Number 3. Ryan Sherkey. 
With Havertz and Mount looking likely to leave, we also need some reinforcement in the CM slash CAM area, but with Nkunku largely being played there next season, I feel as if we should go for a slightly less established star who can rotate in comfortably. In that case, look no further than exciting Lyon attacking midfielder Ryan Cherki. The French Algerian teenager would be an excellent addition to the already impressive pool of attacking talent we have here at Chelsea, and would fit right into that CAM role if needs be. Though he can also play from either wing as well, he's incredibly two-footed so I think he'd also make a decent backup to Noni Madueke as a left-footed option on the right-hand side if he was the required there. His stats are mightily impressive for such a young player, greens across the board for the French under-21 international. He hasn't played many minutes and is not in the starting 11 for 50% of the time so that might affect his stats slightly here but it's astonishing nonetheless. He's in the 84th percentile for assists per 90, 95th for expected assists, 97th for shot creating actions, 89th for passes attempted, 95th for progressive passes, 98th for progressive carries, 99th for successful take-ons, 96th for retouches in the opposing penalty area, and 95th for progressive passes received. It's almost mind-boggling how well he is doing despite his lesser playtime and his young age. Though his pass completion and scoring stats aren't the greatest, he's obviously raw and that can be trained into him under a proper coach, especially one the calibre of Pochettino. I have no doubt that he'd fit in really well with his team of young up and coming talents and would be wonderful to get his signature. Leon are reportedly in financial trouble at the moment too with them supposedly needing to gain around 60 million in funds. Cherki is touted to be one of the players likely to leave if it comes down to it, so we'd be able to get him for a good fee, around 20 to 25 million. Number 4. Axel Di Sassi Despite having a wealth of good starting centre-backs at Chelsea, we are set to lose Khalidou Koulibaly to the Saudi Pro League, and possibly Trevor Shaloba to the Serie A. This would leave us with only Thiago Silva and Wesley Fofana on that right side, and as the pair of them are relatively injury prone, I feel as if bringing in another centre back is a good idea. An emerging star is Monaco's Axel Di Sassi, who had a great season for Le Rouge et Blanc in 2022-23. The Frenchman has been a mainstay of their defence this season, even being selected as team captain multiple times. Usually I don't show the goal and assist stats for defensive minded players, but I'll make an exception for De Sassi because he has an impressive 6 goals and 4 assists in all comps this season. And we'll see in a moment, his offensive stats are kinda crazy. This man is gathering so much attention, he's incredibly strong and press resistant with good feet, is pacey and is incredibly intelligent at reading the game. If you take a look at his stats, you can see why people are rating him so highly. He's in the 96th percentile for progressive carries and passes, 93rd for take-ons, 86th for interceptions. Now you might be seeing this very low 4th percentile for tackles and be wondering, Mono, why would you suggest a defender that can't tackle? And to you my friend, I will tell you why. I have watched this man intently and he rarely ever needs to make a tackle. You know there's that famous Maldini quote where he said something to the effect of, if I have to make a tackle I've already made a mistake? Di Sassi follows that almost to a T. He is so smart with his positioning and will opt to intercept and get the ball before it even gets to the forward players. He doesn't have high tackles because, well, the ball never gets to the attacker's feet in the first place against him. He also has low clearances because as you can see he prefers to pass the ball rather than clearing his lines, which could be risky in the Premier League because of how intense the pressing is, but I feel as if he's good enough at beating that press for it to be a non-issue. I mentioned before about his goal scoring slash assisting efforts, and you can see how good he is in that regard to compare to other centre backs in the top 5 leagues. Getting goals from your defenders is an incredibly important and sometimes overlooked aspect of the game. Think about how many goals we scored and games we won because of Terry, or Carvalho, or Cahill, or even Zuma more recently. Being able to be a danger from set pieces and not just have to rely on the forward players all the time is a great commodity, and Axel would bring that quality. He's going relatively cheap in the market too, with his estimated value being around 25 to 35 million, which I believe is a steal in today's market. Number 5. Ivan Tony. I've spoken a lot about strikers in the last few weeks, and that is because getting the right one in can make or break our season. With us looking almost certain to be buying a, the ever-exciting young Senegalese striker Nicholas Jackson, it seems as if we are holding off for a later date to buy a more established star. 
with all of our strikers, Brozier, David Datra, Fafano, plus Nico Jackson being young, raw talents. Though I am incredibly convinced about Jackson and reckon he'll explode here after watching him more intently these last few weeks, I still believe that we could make a January move for Ivan Tony, as Didi Fafana seems like he's on his way out with a loan move. Not much needs to be said about Tony because he's notoriously been great this season. He scored 20 goals and bagged 4 assists in 33 matches in the league, putting himself in 3rd place for the highest scorers in the league this season, only behind Harry Kane, who always scores 25 plus goals, and Erling Haaland, who is a Norwegian robot. Coming second best to those two is nothing to be ashamed about, and he did this whilst playing for Brentford. No disrespect to Brentford, but they don't have service of the same quality as Tottenham or Manchester City. He's also played less games than both of those two, had around 30 less shots. It's quite astounding that he's managed to do such a feat, and personally I think that he is the only reason that Brentford finished in the top half this season. He will be incredible with a better team around him, and he's the type of number 9 that we could really do with a Chelsea. Let's look at his stats because they are quite shocking. You'd think he'd have better goal scoring stats, but this is largely down to the fact that he has scored a lot of penalties, which is not something to gloss over, a goal is a goal, they just aren't included in this metric on screen. You will see that as we go through these, that a lot of his quote unquote bad stats are again down to his lack of quality teammates. His expected assists, for example, are way higher than his assists, suggesting that his forward partners aren't scoring the chances he's providing them. He has a low total shots because he rarely gets served the ball, as you can see from his low progressive passes received. He's a target man, so he doesn't pass often or well, and he rarely gets any touches in the opposing penalty area. Despite this, he still has impressive numbers. Just imagine what he would do with Enzo's through balls or James's crosses. He's also pretty decent in the air with a great leap, winning most of his aerials, as well as leading the line well defensively too. Because of his ban, he won't be available for a little while, but I think he is worth waiting on, especially if we can get him cheaper because of the ban. He's valued at around 50 million at the moment, which is arguably a bargain considering his output. But those are just a few alternative transfer targets that we could buy, and that was my list. Let me know who you think is the best option out of all of these in the comment section below, and if you'd be so kind, subscribe to the channel and leave the video a like if you enjoyed. Don't forget to tap the notification bell so you never miss a video from me. I've been Mono from Mono CFC, and remember, in the rain or in the dry, keep that blue flag flying high. Come on you blues.